You know, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how I do this particular feature that I love sneaking into builds when I can. And that feature, my friends, is this awesome upper windshield. Now, it works best if you've already done a roof raise, but you can do it without one. I've seen it happen. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step, everything you need to know if this is something that you think would really make your schoolie better. My name's Chuck Cassie, don't go anywhere. I'm here today to show you how to get some third eye vision. All right, so here it is, an overview of what we're shooting for today. And that is gonna to be to cut an opening in our beautiful, freshly roof raised schoolie and insert into it a piece of automotive style glass with a new rubber gasket around it. It makes such a difference to how the interior of the bus feels. I can't even begin to tell you. Let's go inside and see if I can convince you of its merits. If you're like me, you're a little taller. And while I love a school bus because of all the windows, my sight line is right about here. If I look dead ahead, I'm looking at foam. And I love spray foam, don't get me wrong. But I want a view and there is just tons of potential for that up here. Because the sill comes out flush with this part, it's just tons of storage potential. You can put plants up there, succulents. Who doesn't love a succulent in a school bus? And really make something special. I'm gonna go ahead and do a time warp and take you back in time to when I was just starting the install on this window. The glass company that we work with is coming here today to give me some new front windshields and replace some glass on another bus. And while he's here, I'm gonna go ahead and have him cut and install the glass for my upper windshield. And our first step is gonna be measuring and cutting a hole in the beautiful front end of this bus. Check it out. If this is a feature you wanna add in your bus, the first place to start is on the inside. This is the inside of my front cap. And when we did the roof raise, we just went ahead and went all the way across because I wasn't sure how this was all gonna play out. On Thomas buses, the windshield wiper motors are mounted up high, which drives me nuts. And in my bus, these motors, instead of being tilted down like they are now, they are sticking straight up. No reason for that. So I pulled the motors off and re-clocked them and reinstalled them in the downward position so that they're not sticking up. Because if they're sticking straight up, that's gonna get in the way of where I want this window to be. With the wiper motors tucked down out of the way, I've gone in and I've made marks on how high up I can go and still clear these motor mounts. So with these marks made, I'm gonna go to the outside, drill the holes through so I can index where my bottom line will be. I've got a mark up here where my top line will be and then my two side lines. With those holes made, I can then go ahead and that'll give me the shape and dimensions of my rectangle. These holes that we make for these windows, they have a radius to them. So I'll grab my radius template, which is a six inch hole saw, and trace that in the corners. And then I'll make the cut. Once the cut's made, I'll have to trim this frame back from behind like a back cut a little bit so that the gasket has room here. And then I'm ready for our flat glass installer to come out. He'll cut a piece, install a new, new gasket, and pop a window in there. Okay, so you can see where my holes came through. And then I use that to determine the dimensions of my rectangle. And then I traced the outside edge of my hole saw in the corners to give me the radius I want. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and drill some bigger holes, probably eight of them. And then I'm gonna grab my jigsaw with a metal cutting blade and I'm gonna cut this out. All right, so one of my favorite ways to cut holes in sheet metal, if I can't use the shears, and you know I love those shears, is with a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Here we've got our really nice Bosch JS572, and instead of having a normal rubber shoe, we've upgraded to a metal plate. The rubber shoes have a tendency to catch the metal chips that are made when you're cutting metal. So you put a, a steel plate on the bottom, and it keeps those chips from embedding in the rubber of your jigsaw. So as always, you wanna wear 
eye and ear protection because this job is gross. I got my welding jacket on to keep the hot chips off my skin. And uh, let's go cut a hole in a perfectly good school bus. All right, for the finishing cut where the frame is, I can't use the jigsaw because it's too thick. So I'll be using a cutoff wheel. We'll cut out the two sides of the tube that form that rivet line across there, and that should pop right out. I like to use these magnetic fixturing clamps to hold the off cut in place because I don't want this thing flying around. <laughs> Doing a 80 grit flapper disc here to clean up the edges. Because we want that to be nice and clean. And let's see how we did. <laughs> oh boy, we're committed now. Very cool. So we're just gonna go back in here, deburr the edges, take down any high spots. I went ahead and cut the framing back a little bit extra because the gasket's gonna need some space to occupy there. And I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually from the outside, I'm gonna weld a little patch over that rivet hole. And I'll do the same on this side as well. And then you see there where we have the two, the, uh, the two skins, I'm actually gonna grind that down into a nice smooth taper. I might even put a little bit of a weld here. Then, my friends, <laughs> we can paint and let the glass come. So I can't seem to leave good enough alone or well enough alone, whatever it is. Um, this is where the windshield wiper used to poke through. I went ahead and filled it in with some weld and put a rivet in, did the same on that side. And if you can see here, I blended those two sheets together so that the gasket that comes in will have a better time sealing. Maybe you can tell better here. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead now now I can hit this all with some primer and uh, we'll just sit back until the glass man comes. All right, well now that we've got our window cutout made, I mean, isn't that just gonna be nice? You're up in here looking out at views of the shop and the camper, <laughs> anyway. We got a cardboard template being made and uh, Robert, my glass friend, we've been working together for like seven years, man. Yeah, it's been a while. Huh? <laughs> it's been a while. So he got that up there and uh, drew a template of the hole I made earlier. And uh, while he's at it, he's actually uh, cutting some new flat glass. So if you got a bus and you mess up your windshield, you don't have to go try to find glass for a 96 Thomas. Just call your glass shop because flat glass is stuff they can cut on site. And that's what, Robert here does, he did the windows. Well, he was doing stuff back for us in the day when we were in the bus company, but he also did the windows on uh, my own personal bus and then all the project buses here. So he, he's got the whole rig. He's got a truck outside, full, full glass shop out there. So you just pop it in there and zip that seal around it. And 
And there it goes. That is something. There it goes. Nice. Oh, it looks good. If you look around in here, you can see how those reclocked windshield wiper motors ended up out of the way of the box there and over here. We've got three inches of spray foam and on each side, we still have enough cavity here. I'm gonna do a speaker on each side there. I might do a small cubby above the window and I'm definitely gonna throw a little map pocket or something like that here. That's really clutch storage because you know, I'm gonna be sitting right here in my bucket seats. I hope you can see here the way that this box is just sealed in and held in place by the foam. And my trick for doing that is I actually just set it up on blocks <laughs> like that. And it does have a couple of trim head screws going into the uh, steel framing on either side but really most of the box is held in place by the foam. And then of course, once I have my wall panel here, which will all be one solid sheet, that wall panel is gonna help hold this all in place too. But right now, I mean, look at that Nog Champa bounce. It's really solid. Well, I'll try to ignore all of the bug splatters from my most recent trip to Kansas, but I hope this gives you a good idea of what the finished product is gonna look like. You can see there why I kind of fussed so much about getting that gasket to have a, a smooth transition down where that sheet lap is. But that's what we're going for. And you can just feel that third eye enlightenment beginning. I mean, look at that thing. How freaking cute is that? Well, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully now you know how to do that. And next week we're gonna continue our prep Getting this bus ready for paint, I don't really know what is next. I think maybe getting that roof sealed up. That seems like a good idea, huh? Anyways, whatever it is, I know you don't want to miss it. My name's Chuck Cassie. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.